Hey, are you sad that you couldn't go to Hajj this year? Feeling broke because you can't afford to go to Hajj? Are your feet still smelly because of the foot fungus that you have? Haha, <laughs> well fear no more. I have 10 tips for you to make this the best little hijjah ever and a bonus tip at the end. Now roll the intro. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Tip number one, seek tawbah. Say astaghfirullah from the bottom of your heart and ask Allah for his forgiveness. Take advantage of this month and seek tawbah. Waiting for NBA 2K to load? While you wait, say astaghfirullah. Take advantage of this downtime and keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. Waiting for someone to pick up your phone call? While you wait, say astaghfirullah. Don't waste your time. Every second you have, seek tawbah. Picking your nose and waiting to see if anyone's around? While you're waiting, say astaghfirullah. Your iman will increase and uh, that booger will taste a little better. <laughs> but hang on a second. Wait, I I'm perfect. I'm not making sense sins and I'm not doing all those sort of things so like what am I seeking Toba for? If you don't get your bald self, listen, the messenger saw him to seek Toba over 70 times a day and he was perfect. Surely we've made mistakes knowingly and unknowingly. So seek Toba. That's, that's that's a good point. Valid. Tip number two, your salah, your prayers. The same way that you're keenly waiting for your barber to signal you once he's ready for you so you can jump in that chair and get your hair cut so no one steals your spot. You need to be keenly waiting for Allah to signal you to come and pray to him. Really? You're gonna give me a bald-headed man advice and examples through a barber? I don't even go to a barber, bro. Give me something better. Okay, try to imagine this. Allah is directly calling you and whenever he calls you it's like you're screening his calls and you're ignoring him and sending him straight up to voicemail you see what separates a muslim from a non-muslim is the prayer when allah calls you to come and connect with him it is your responsibility to connect with allah Tip number three, your sunnah prayers. Look, have you ever found yourself on Zillow or some type of real estate website searching for a home? I mean, you're not even ready to purchase a home, but you're looking for a home. Well, what if I were to tell you you had the opportunity to design and build your own exclusive home? What if I were to tell you that Allah will design a one of one property for you, beautifully designed to your exact specifications in paradise, my friend? What would you say then? I would ask you, what's the catch and how much charity do I have to give for this dream house of mine? Now you see, that's a good question. You see, a charity is your time. If you spend your time praying all of your sunnah prayers here listed on the screen, Allah will guarantee a house for you in paradise made for your specifications exactly how you want it in paradise. It's a great deal. I guess that makes sense. If I pray my sunnah prayers, I'm just going to be given a house from Allah in paradise? That's a pretty good deal. Tip number four, your nightly prayer. Wait, 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 where are you going? Um, listen, the last tip said something about a sunnah prayer. I just finished my sunnah prayers. I'm good to go. Whoa, man, you're missing out on some great opportunities right now. You see, the nightly prayer not only cleanses you, but it allows you to start your day up with more success. You can spend time asking Allah for the things that you need in your day, and this is the time to communicate to Allah for anything that you need. So are you suggesting that I, you know, like pray a little more, more at night and ask Allah for everything else that I need? my days. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying, you bald-headed, overweight, mufti mank. I guess that makes sense. Tip number five, and this is an important one, give sadaqa. You see, when Wait, you get... I'm gonna... Sorry, I'm gonna pause you right here. Um, this is an area I don't need help in. I'm very generous, actually, so uh, just skip to the next tip, please. All right, homie, what do you mean by that? What I mean by this, friend, is that I, I'm, I'm very generous when it comes to that. In the masjid, when they're asking for mil dollar, I'm like, me, son, I raise my hand. Whenever they're looking for someone to raise their hand, I'm your boy is raising your hand, all right? So what? If my check bounces every now and then, and so what? If I break up that $1,000, in over 48 monthly payments, I still do it. And that's what matters the most. It's not about how much you're giving, it's about how often you're giving. You see, Allah loves consistency, bro. So give consistently. That's what matters more than the amount. You know what? I don't know where I put it. Oh God, what are you doing? What are you looking for? I'm looking for my checkbook so I can write you a check for $100,000 to be paid to you over the span of 240 months. 
this dude is straight up hopeless. Tip number six, read the Quran more frequently. Don't rush to finish the Quran. Take your time. Struggle to perfect the recitation of each letter. Don't be so anxious to finish the entire book that you're willing to sacrifice its meaning and the pronunciation just so you can brag to your friends about that you finished the Quran three times this whole week. All right, so focus on bettering your relationship with the Allah's book and you'll see the quality of your life improve. So that's the tip, man. Focus on your relationship with the Quran. Nice one. Tip number seven, fasting. Look, let's be real here, man. Since Ramadan has finished, you've piled on a few pounds in all the wrong places. Exactly, all right? So let's take these 10 days as an opportunity to better not only your spiritual health, but also your physical health as well. Your body's going to thank you. Your soul and your spirit will thank you as well. But now that I'm done body shaming you, let's also remember that fasting puts a 70 year distance between you and the hellfire. We both know how bad you need this distance. But let's suppose you can't fast the 10 days. The least you need to do is fast the day of Arafah because on the day of Arafah, Allah forgives your last years of sins and the following year of sins as well. So you need to fast. Okay, but well, well, let's suppose, what if on the day of Arafah, right? Like I'm, uh... I'm someone who's really sick, right? Sick or something, and I can't, I can't fast on Arafah. What should we do then? Obviously, if you have an underlying medical condition, don't fast. Okay, okay. What if, what if um, I'm really old, right? And I, I'm sick and I need to take medicines. What do I do then? Look, Allah knows your intentions. He knows you would fast if you could. Okay, well, what if I'm on my period? What, what, what then? Seriously, do I even need to answer that question? Probably not. Tip number eight, make dua constantly. Be consistent with your duas. Ask Allah to bless you with whatever it is that you need. Treat dua as a conversation between you and Allah and don't allow anything, I repeat anything, to interrupt this. I need a bathroom. You need to use the bathroom? But now I have to make dua, that's more important. This is just pee in your pants, it's okay. I need to make dua, that's more important than your bathroom. Your deeds and du'as are multiplied. So take advantage of this time with Allah and consider this like a mini Ramadan taking place. Tip number nine, connect with the family. Look, a lot of us have terrible or damaged relationships with our families and it is our responsibility to fix them. So take this time to fix your relationship with the people that you love and forgive the people who might have even wronged you. Amend those relationships and call up the people to fix those bonds that have been broken. There's a huge reward for those who maintain family ties and focus on improving and repairing relationships. Makes sense. Tip number 10, make your adhkar and your dhikr. Look, I know you're busy to rush out after you finish your praying, but just take a moment, a second, but take a few seconds to gather your thoughts, reflect over what you just prayed about and ask yourself, how could you make your prayers better next time? Take these moments, which are precious moments, essentially to praise Allah in the process and take these moments as opportunities to develop a stronger link with Allah. That's what you should do with this time. Don't rush. All right, there we go. 10 tips for Dhul Hijjah. Yep. Now uh, I want you to have a beautiful and blessed rest of your day and a beautiful part of the month. And uh, Tama, 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 didn't you not promise yeah. there was going to be a bonus tip? What are you uh, doing? Yeah, that's, that's right. I did. Uh, well, okay. Well, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get you those. Let's get you those bonus tips. All right. Let's go for the bonus right, tip. Here we go. Hang on a second. Is, is this just a blank screen? Did SQ just trick me? God damn this dude. Oh, there is no bonus tip, is there? I feel like a fool waiting over here, staring at this blank screen, thinking there's something wrong with my phone or my device. There isn't though, but I will tell you this much. Uh, if by some miracle you made it to the end of this video, that means you enjoyed it enough to smash it with a like button. And uh, if you were some for some, for some weird reason, not even subscribed to my channel, and you made it to the end of this video, that means you enjoyed the video enough that you want to be a part of the uh, community. So hit the subscribe button while you're there. Spend a little bit more time with me while watching any of these videos. I hope you like this style of video or type of video. Drop it in the comment section below if you did. Any improvements, I'm always down to improve my content. Love you all for the sake of Allah. And until next time, I'm out.